Well, hi, YouTubers. Hi, I'm back with Six Miles City Books, and it is Liz Fel um, Felding's The Bride's Baby, Mills and Boone True Love. Okay, so this was a freebie. And what happened was um, a couple of weeks ago in the Sun newspaper, there was a voucher for a free Mills and Boone book, which a friend of mine got because I certainly didn't because um, I saw the bar line, but I am. Um, do not read the sun newspaper i've got nothing against people who do read the sun however i don't buy the sun okay um my father's from liverpool and that should say everything that you need to know okay that should that says everything so but she got the book didn't like it so she's passed it on to me and there was a voucher in it for a free book for half price book which i did actually take up on this was a free book in the sun newspaper okay so <clears throat> the bride's baby by Liz Felding. The bride everyone is talking about. Sylvia Smith is organising a glittery fundraiser event. A wedding show in her ancestral stately home. She has even been roped into pretending to be a bride, except she's five months pregnant, and her baby's secret father, Tom McFarlane, is Longbourn Court's new owner. So basically, Sylvia, Sylvia Smith was born to poshness, Lost poshness, lost her stately home, okay? Yeah, for some reason they're still considered posh by pretty much everyone, okay? Um, her friend ran off with someone else instead of marrying Tom McFarlane, okay? They meet up to discuss legalities and things like that. They basically have a little one-nighter, okay? Um, she gets pregnant and it's so, so stupid. <laughs> So instead of getting in touch with him saying you're going to be a daddy, you don't want to get involved, even though he's a goddamn billionaire, okay, but she's like a, a hard-working, um, she's a hard-working woman of the world, she's an independent woman, okay. Um, she writes him a letter, he doesn't get it, he, he thinks he's getting married to someone else, okay, like this is, this is what happened after, after, okay. Sylvia's happy event, as Metro passport control, he paused at the bookshop with 12 hour flight ahead of him, he needed something to read. Didn't need an interpreter to decide for happy event, and for a moment he felt a surge of something so powerful he felt like a man with the world at his feet. So when something soft and flowing, and there was nothing to show that she was pregnant. Only a special glow of a woman who's about to told the world that she was having a baby and she was totally thrilled about it. Here's baby. He picked up the magazine, opened, and it came crashing back to earth as he saw that the cover photo had been cropped. Inside the same photograph showed that she was posed with a tall, fair-haired man and the caption read, A favourite events organiser, Sylvia Smith, who has just announced that she's expecting a baby later this summer, pictured here with her childhood friend, the recently divorced Earl of Manchester. The marriage plans were put on her when Sylvia's grandfather died, and as Jamie put it, life got in the way. Wonderful to see them looking so happy to be together again, and we confidently predict wedding bells very shortly. Oh, so basically Tom doesn't realise the kid's his, because of a magazine called Celebrity, which everyone is obsessed with. Oh yes, everyone is so obsessed with this magazine that, here we go, it's to do with a Sylvia's mother's charity, okay? Oh, basically Sylvia, it's one here, Sylvia is estranged from her father, because her father is gay, and after her mother died he moved away to be, you know, with his one true love, okay? And she's just estranged from him, okay? But Celebrity magazine comes in again. This is um, about her mother's charity. It was about raising the profile of a charity that her mother had founded. A chance to show a national audience that what they'd achieved, maybe even the coach other women to the branches in other areas, how these like, other organisations had to grow or die. About giving local artists and craftsmen a national stage in which she aired her talent. And it was for her too, if he's into hide. Actually, Laura, it's not enough. What well, isn't enough? The fee celebrity often knew it isn't enough. Isn't it? Laura asked, surprised out of disapproval as she was following the defensive. I thought it was very generous. She would have told you that. But for this feature, they pay twice that. Oh yes, basically a celebrity offering so much money, so much money for this magazine. And essentially poor Sylvia, who's got a bit of a stutter. It might be a bit shit really. There's Sylvia Smith and you've got a stutter, okay? She's kind of groped into pretending to be a bride and then, and then Tom McFarlane shows up at his stately home when his wedding event is coming up and doesn't realise that Sylvia isn't getting married to his other guy. It's all pretend. And he's carrying his baby and he doesn't actually know that. 
It's so goddamn ridiculous. I just read this book laughing. I just read this book laughing, okay? How two people, two intelligent people, can be so goddamn stupid. So if it's like a martyr to her own mind, it's kind of like, even though you're a billionaire, and even though you uh, basically don't have a family of your own, maybe you may want a family to get involved, I'm going to do it all by myself because I'm a single, independent woman and I don't need your money. You know who's a goddamn billionaire and owns, and owns her stately home. I was like the thinking, Sylvia, did you get knocked up intentionally? Did you seduce this guy intentionally to get knocked up, to get your stately home back? I reckon you did. And the thing is, if she'd done that, if she'd been, if she'd have been honest about that, that would have made this book brilliant. That would have been a twist on the whole kind of Mills and Boone female victimhood mentality. This would have been the, I purposely said I was on the pill, but I wasn't, and I'm knocked up, and now you have to marry me, and I'm going to get my stately home back, and then I'm going to divorce you, and then I'm going to get the house. Again. Yeah. Now, if that would have been the twist, that would have been the, probably the best bitchy Mills and Boone book going. Because I've read Mills and Boone books where they were hit, these so-called heroines are total bitches. There's one where, um, okay, it's going back a couple of years ago, where I can't remember the author. Um, but essentially, this woman has a stupid argument with her husband, stupid, stupid argument, which she started because she was, or I didn't know at the time she was pregnant, okay? She overheard him making a typical, she's doing my head in comment, okay, to her, to, to like his brother, okay? Realised that she didn't want to be around him, okay? And then just took off. And then, like four years later, she's had his son, okay, and that bothered to let him get involved. And when he finds out about this, he turns her around and calls her out on her behaviour, calling her an utter bitch. And she was. But of course, all forgiving in the end, and they get back together, you know. You know, miss out the first four years of his son's life because she was, actually was a bitch. More of those characters should be bitches. There you go. But. Here we go. This is the kind of word that Sylvia inhabits. Here we go. Sylvia watched with certain my detachment as Gina and her stuff were in in raptures over her great grandmother's wedding dress. She wanted it from the loft, and left it in the loft of her stately home. This is so beautiful, Sylvia. Gina said, examining the lace. The workmanship, French courtier. Undoubtedly, she said, great grandmother Clementine. Say that she meant to go on. But it's a dress for a very young bride. She's being auntie, which married my great grandfather. I agree. I was saying something much more sophisticated for you. Flow in loose, since it's a style that suits you well. No veil, though. I thought a loose fitting jacket with wire sleeves, turn back cuffs. Oh, yes. Oh, and look, a small tiara, nothing over the top. Of course, a tiara. Fake wedding, but a real tiara. Of course, of course. But anyway, tease them in the dress, they have little bits and moments about the magazine. They keep going back and forth on this. They keep going back and forth. Okay. And then. Thomas has to basically leave the country because he's done with her, okay? Meaning, no, he actually felt this one because he's just dumb. And then, and then... <clears throat> he writes her a letter. Oh, yes, God. You know how easy this to be sorted if people thought about emails, okay? You know, what number on Facebook? Twitter? <laughs> Instagram? <laughs> Smooth signals? I don't know. <laughs> My dearest Sylvia, tomorrow will be your special day. If she actually, you actually finishes getting married to someone else. I know you have your father to support you. I know I can leave you in his safe hands. I'm going away for a while, but not running this time. I need something to do with my life. Something bigger, something real. First, I want to reassure you that you can rely on my discretion. What happened between us will always remain a very special and very private memory. I hope the signs for you tomorrow, and I wish you and Jeremy a very long and happy life. Yours, Tom. Sylvia so read the night. Maybe she was tired. Maybe she was emotionally drained. But now that made sense. Yeah, maybe you're just so dumb, Sylvia. Here you go. Oh, yeah. Gemini believes. And then, and then, a couple of days later, Tom finally gets the letter because it was lost because she posted it to his British address, but he doesn't mind you for six months. Then Mr. McFarlane. It's when he gets the letter finally. I wanted to let you know, as a result of our recent account, I was betting a baby in July. Oh yeah, now, now he finds out. About two pages to goddamn go, a few pages to go. Yeah, yeah. So basically, right, they get back together, they marry each other, and all happier after, and she gets her stately home back. Okay, oh my god. 
I read this but I'm glad I didn't buy this. Okay, if I was to buy a Northern Moon book, it's looking a bit more classy than this one. This book is goddamn awful. You know something, I, I understand why it was given away for free because I don't know anyone in this right mind who would actually physically buy this book. It was painful. I just read it on a tube journey, okay? It was physically, physically painful. But anyway, this is my review of it, okay? It's six months to see books and I read it. So it wasn't a do not finish, it's turning 200 pages, 181 pages actually. So anyway, The Bride's Baby by Liz Felding. Just don't read it, find another author. Maybe you do want to read it, maybe. Maybe, she's written other books. Here you go, here's her other books. Esther Wears Convenient Husband Required. Mistletoe and the Lost Stiletto. Tempted by Travel. Flirting with Italian. The Last Woman He Ever Dated. He Did Ever Date. Anything But Vanilla. Anything But Vanilla? For His Eyes Only. Victoria's Damsel in Distress. The Sheik's Convenient Princess. The Sheik's Convenient Princess. Okay. Right. There's the other one she's... You know something? Maybe I should write a Mills and Boo novel. Maybe I should. <laughs> I do that, actually. <laughs> I laugh. Anyway, sign up for YouTubers. Bye now.